Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Griffin Tonell, Griffy D Pad, and we're doing another vlog. I have been looking forward to recording this video for about a week now, but I've been super busy, so I haven't been able to record it until now. And honestly, I think that that week of retrospect is actually going to be really good for this one because we're talking about my very, very first game jam, something I've been wanting to do for a while. If you've followed the channel at all, you might know that I want to make video games. I've wanted to make video games for a very, very long time now. <laughs> Most of my life, in fact. It's been something I've been striving towards, something I've been studying, something I've been pushing for. And even in some of my videos, you can see me kind of critiquing and really looking at games through a game design, through a game designer, level designer aspect. And it's kind of what I try to do. It's kind of my shtick, so to speak, at least with how I play games, because I'm a completionist. I like to look at the nitty gritty and that comes all comes from me wanting to understand the game and me wanting to understand the back end, the code, the why things do this. Why does X equal A and yada, yada, yada. So doing this game jam really felt like the next step for me. And I kind of want to chat about it a little bit. What I think went really well, what I think didn't, what I learned about myself in the process, and what kind of my whole team did. So let's jump right into it. To start off, let's just jump right to it. What went really well and what went really poorly. Um, I actually don't think anything especially went poorly. I think our team was pretty good. It was really fun. We created our game called 6912. And I think our team worked really well because we had a vision and we stuck to it. That was one of our things we did really well. Um, we came up with our design at the very beginning. I fleshed out our design to the nth degree, way more than was necessary for the project. And we went along with that. And it worked out really well. Communication was really the big one. It was, oh, you need to pull to the get to the repo. Let's do that. Let's make sure that we're always communicating with each other, always working hand in hand so that nothing ever goes unnoticed. And it definitely worked in such. We actually got to a point where our artists were like, we have nothing to do. And I think that felt really good. That felt really good for all of us. As for things that didn't go well, there was really only one thing for me that didn't go fantastic, and that was time management. We got the game done fine, but I did dumb things. I I did that thing that I do where I go stay up ridiculously late working on projects. Um, and yeah. But in that time management, one thing I did well was we all took time away from the game. And I think that helped the entire team overall with both working on it, morale, not burning out. Mine was spent going to see Dear Evan Hansen at the Keller Auditorium, which was awesome. I highly recommend you go see that, but that's not what this video is about. Maybe I should make another video about Dear Evan Hansen. So the actual design was something that I really enjoyed. Within my team, it was me, uh, another programmer, Nathan, and Hannah and Rebecca are two artists, and they did all the art, and it looks so great. I'll show it to you in a second. Actually, bam, here's art. God, it just makes me so happy. So we came up with this idea of combining some ideas and came up with a space puzzle game. The whole idea of it was you're on this spaceship that is trying to reach a destination and everything keeps breaking. To get to your destination, you have to fix different pieces that are falling apart. And once you fix enough pieces, you land. We never actually got around to making the landing part. <laughs> and we never got around to having there be consequences for what you fix and what you don't fix as well as the random generation. The random generation was actually one of the main things that I worked on. That's something I still want to implement because it was an interesting idea and I just, I want to add it because I worked so hard on it and then it just never happened. I was really disappointed by that. But yeah, thinking about the actual design, that night I spent designing was one of my favorite. I've had so much fun doing it. I designed a general layout idea that I totally trashed. Uh, I wrote out a repair loop that was basically the idea was you had to pick between two things to fix and whichever one you didn't fix would have consequences on the next cycle of that. We didn't actually end up, end up um, implementing that because 
we couldn't figure out the random generation, but that's something that I still actually really want to try and figure that one out. I'm working on that on the side right now. But the favorite thing that I got to do in terms of design was figuring out this world, figuring out what we wanted to add into this rocket ship, how it should be laid out, how it should be fixed, what components should be there. Do we want anti-grav? Do we need a communications array? How about the thrusters? What does all of that what should all of that look like? What should the iconography be? What should the puzzles be to fix them? And it was all really fun. I ended up coming with up with six main ideas for puzzles, uh, three of which we ended up trashing. We had one idea for basically inserting a block into a square to finish off the square. We had to trash that because we couldn't figure out how to do it. It was a, one of our custom ideas. We also had the ideas for Sudoku and Pick Cross mini games, but it turns out those are pretty hard to code. They're still doable, don't get me wrong, but within the span of 48 hours, it just didn't make sense for us. So we ended up having stuff like button mashing, button combos, card matching, minesweeper, pong, uh, flappy bird-esque games, and snake. And we still gotta implement a bunch of stuff, and I really gotta give props to Nathan on that. He knocked those out of the park. But it was all super fun, and god, it's still just an experience that I can't get out of my brain. I'm recording this video a week later, and I'm still looking back super fondly on it. This, it was, it was a heck of an experience. But hey, I'm rambling. How about we actually take a look at the game itself? All right, so let's go ahead and hit that there play button in Unity. Unity is what we used to build the game, obviously. Play. This is our character, and this is kind of the area that I designed. You step in those, and you fix the ship. I'm so I'm still so happy with how these turned out, and it really got it was fun that I got to play with a uh, tile mapping. This tile mapping is something that I'm working on learning personally and that was something that was kind of fun is we really got to learn what of our what are our strengths what are our weaknesses where can we learn and what can we improve on so let's go ahead and just hop into this button that game so you gotta mash the space bar once you get to 10 you're done you beat it and we've got little stuff like that like this one here is pong which just Turns out is actually really difficult to uh, to beat here. Oh, actually I'm just gonna lose. But yeah, all of these are custom assets that are just it's so cool to me that our team was able to pull this off. Come on, just beat me. There it goes. There we go. Yeah, we even have this card matching mini game. Oh wow, I'm getting getting kind of lucky with this one and all in all it just it feels right this is the section specifically that I designed I designed this rocket ship almost not necessarily maze but different rooms it was gonna have a lot more but like I said just time ended up taking up a lot more than we expected I'd love to add assets to this and I think I might talk with our team about adding some more in there cuz said it was really fun and turned out super super well but let's take a look at the actual overall um, level from the outside gotta make that disappear zooming in zooming all the way up cool. there we go so yeah this is our actual level itself it's just a box and that's something i kind of wish i did more with i wish i experimented more with the actual level design less in terms of the different assets we used and more in terms of the physical space we used this black to show off the walls and show off basically what would be the ceiling as if you're looking through it i think we could have done more with that and i wish we had but hindsight's 2020 right i also wish we had actually gotten the random generation into work and i wish that we had done so much more i wish we could have done more and i it's one of those things where I know it was a 48 hour project, but I have so much more I want to work on for it. And that's kind of what's really special about the game for me. Let's play a couple more mini games, just cause 
I'm here and why not? Let's see what this one is. Oh, yeah, this one's Minesweeper. Oh. Some are broken still. This one's Snake. So you collect the, uh, the whole idea behind this one was actually really fun. You collect the flames here and you get different fuel rods for your ship. And that's how you power your thrusters. Each of our mini games, it did have the idea behind it. Like the batteries, the whole idea of mashing the button was you're building up energy and it's getting stored in the batteries or this one you're collecting the, you're collecting the um, fuel to power your thrusters. Even the anti-grav, which we'll go over to now. Yeah, the anti-grav, this is the anti-gravity machine, is a uh, Flappy Bird. Um, which is kind of a fun idea of like, hey, it's a gravity-based game. Let's blow that. And I really had some fun with that. Looking at some of the different ideas, like our heat shield was Pong, the batteries was button mashing, life support, which is this one, was Minesweeper. Let's actually come over here and play. Um. So yeah, the whole idea was hit the letters in the uh, time frame. Yeah, we really had fun with this and it was just nice to build and play around with and enjoy testing ourselves and figuring all of that out. But when it really comes down to it, there's one particular thing about the game jam that made me feel better than anything else in it. It was the fact that I can consider myself a game developer. I mentioned this at the top of the video and I mentioned this a lot, but I've been working towards this for a while and I'm still working towards it. But sitting there at that table working for those 48 hours was 48 of the best hours of my life. There's nothing like a game jam to confirm that everything that I've been working for is the right thing. It's the thing that I want to do, that I want to spend the rest of my life doing. It really it, it inspired me to keep working, to work harder even, to work more towards this goal that I have. This crazy pie-in-the-sky idea that I just want to keep working towards and keep getting at. This term, school-wise, has been hard. I'm not going to lie. 18 credits is a lot to take on and especially while holding down a job and sometimes it doesn't feel worth it. I've had my fair share of rejections, especially in terms of internships and jobs, personal life and I've definitely gotten down on myself, but this game jam was the exact opposite. I've never felt so inspired and so proud and so happy to be doing what I'm doing. It was confirmation for me that, yeah, this is, this is what I need to be doing. So that's, that, that, those are my ramblings about game development for the game jam. God, it was so fun. And it's definitely given me new skills that I want to play with and I want to experiment with. Who knows? Maybe in the next game jam I'll make something 3D. Really push the limits of my creativity there. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed hearing me ramble, like, subscribe, share, check out the other videos on the channel. Check out Griffin Soapbox. Um, there's a new episode of that coming soon that I've been working on for a little while now and it's like it's half comic book review, half almost therapy session. It's it's a good one. It's it's something that's going to be awesome, I promise. Follow me on Twitter at Griffin What's the other Rick and Roll stuff that I do at the end of these? I don't know. I haven't recorded a vlog in a while. I guess I'll just leave it with this. If you have the opportunity to go to a game jam, do it. It's an experience you'll never forget. So until next time, keep on keeping on. And thanks for watching.